welcome to Kauai Society of Artists Gallery. I'm Renee Palmer, the board president, and we are here today to present to you Art Kauai 2022. We hope you enjoy the show. Um, I would like to now introduce my co-chair, Roseanne Jones, who is going to talk about our juror for this show. Aloha. My name is Roseanne Jones, and I am the treasurer, and I am the co-chair of Art Kauai. And it is our pleasure to show you this amazing show. Our juror this year is Robert Sapelsa, Dr. Robert Sapelsa, who taught for over 30 years at a university, and he was also senior curator for the State Department's Art in Embassies program around the world. Okay, so now we're gonna pass it off to Bob Sapelsa, our juror, who's gonna discuss with you the awards that he's chosen for Art Kauai 2022. Here is one of the pieces. It is titled Shooting Stars by Leslie Frazier. It's a monoprint in acrylic on paper. Um, I chose it for an award in part because of the incredible authority with which she has used the medium, uh, including the use of lots of scraping away of image where you're trying to create the illusions of depth in a work. Um, it's just superb as a monoprint and um, certainly deserves recognition. The fact that this is an art teacher puts a lie to the notion that if you can't do it, you teach it. She both does and teaches, so congratulations. Another work, also on paper, but this one much bigger in size and remarkable for the complexity of the surface is by Carol Bennett. It's called Oomph. Um, the strength of execution, hmm? the control with which she has handled the surface. And also in this piece, as well as in the other piece, the presentation of the piece, very simply, uh, allows the piece to speak for itself. Um, and here again, you have a work that is basically an abstraction. Uh, so well, all of art is abstraction. None of art is absolute reality. Reality is all around us. The art comments on the reality and, well, it also decorates the reality in very good ways. It's one of art's first purposes is to decorate our existence. This is one of three ceramic teapots by Tony Wagner, uh, who is a mistress master, if you will, of uh, <clears throat> manipulation of the, uh, of the clay and the glazing. It's called coquet fuchsia, uh, representing a flower that I guess is common on the islands. Um, <clears throat> all done by hand, all beautifully controlled and executed, and my guess is it would pour well, which is another deciding factor in what you, uh, what you get in a teapot. Uh, this is a beauty, just the right size for a teapot for two folks, and um, beautifully controlled in color, in glazes, and in the shape of the surface. It's a perfect little globe. This <clears throat> compound piece by Fran Kalb, called Moon Stories, um, appeals by the strength of the composition, by the control of the numerous media in the piece, it includes acrylic, collage, ink, found object, and graphite, all on this surface, which is lively based on the juxtaposition of vertical and horizontal rectangles that pull together and jump around, creating an abstract space to result in an image 
but is going to be forever interesting. It's really a very nice piece of abstraction. This is by Roberta Griffith. It is winter in an epoch of isolation. Uh, pastel on paper. Pastel is a very difficult medium, a very delicate medium. What you're doing, in fact, is creating a painting with dry paints. Um, not good if you make mistakes is the problem you get. <clears throat> it's a bit like watercolor <clears throat> in many ways. Um, it spoke to me because of the sense of melancholy that you get from it about how we have all felt within the last <clears throat> within the last two years um, about the strange isolation um, and the feelings of sort of um, alienation that comes from the fact that you can't tell what time it is, you can't tell what day it is, you don't know sometimes where you are because you're always in the same space. Um, and that, that hiding behind a mask, which we generally associate with theatricality, has become a fact of life. Yeah? I have one in my pocket, because in tight spaces, as a person of some age, I have to be careful about who's breathing near me and what they might have with them. So all of that, plus the beautiful control of the media and the restrained color, and the really very fine touch of the blending of the chalks in the, uh, in the space around the artist's head. Uh, she really knows what she's doing and did it very well. Another award went to Patrice Pendarvis, Coquet Mist Two, a watercolor. Uh, again, small piece, beautifully executed, um, remarkable atmosphere that the artist has managed to capture in an image that should be familiar to anyone on this island, anyone who visits this island, but also the touch of warmth in the foreground and the, the she can paint clouds, this one, like nobody else. Uh, very, very fine. This little piece of book art by Abigail Burroughs called Waves takes book art into a new dimension because, in fact, a book is normally something that opens one way and closes another way. And this one moves in waves on the surface, but also it displays colors in a superb restrained way. Um, it is al also an example of the repurposing of materials in a work of art in that the wood is reclaimed wood. But note that she has also very carefully uh, sewn the book together, which is how you put a book together in the traditional uh, Western way. Um, just marvelously done uh, reclaimed wood, paper, and linen thread uh, are the media, and the piece just spoke to me. Plus, it is, in a way, representational of waves, and it can move the way waves move. Uh, waves move constantly. That's, in fact, I think that's partly why we call them waves. <laughs> Another piece deserving of special recognition is by Penny Nichols. It is titled Sunday Morning Rice Street. It's a scene in downtown Lihue that some of you might recognize. Uh, an oil on canvas, very fine expert handling of the medium and an example of the kind of luminosity that you can get using oil medium. Um, this speaks to me because it's an urban landscape and I come from an urban environment. I grew up in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, a dirty industrial city on the shores of Lake Erie. And my dad painted urban landscapes all through his career. My father was an artist. Um, 
<clears throat> and this kind of lonely urban scene is uh, striking for a number, any number of reasons, one of which is how she creates the sense of light coming up in this, as opposed to the notion of light going down. Um, but also that that strange sort of echo of loneliness that you get in non-populated or un unpopulated urban settings. Superb piece. child for next year's uh, competition because of the strength of the image but also because it is even though it's a fiber piece and a quilted piece it works two-dimensionally as a painting as well in fact might be mistaken for a painting but you look at all the beautiful stitching that is in here and the very careful piecing of the the uh, bits of fabric and um, the title uh, Second Concerto, uh, which reminds you of the, the waving sounds of music that you see in the curving elements in the composition. Um, it's a very great piece in terms of its color, the way it's you know, strong in color and the finesse of the worksmanship in the quilting is just extraordinary. So the artist deserves special recognition. It's by Leslie Morris called Second Concerto. And the word is fabric, but this is fabulous fabric. By Carol Matsuda, another of the superb winning pieces. Uh, it is called Yardman's Chum Chunko. And it is a piece of pieced together fibers, embroidered fibers, sewn fibers, and just generally a wonderful construction of what we would have put in a sewing shop 50 years ago, which is now uh, commonly part of museum collections. And this one, based on the quality and the down-to-earthness of the piece and the fact that it portrays a working man at his job in such an elegant manner is really an extraordinary combination. If you look closely, it is a stiff plant fiber woven, put together also with cotton threads and I assume uh, rolled cotton pieces so that we have um, a construction that reminds us of furrows in gardens. And we see the man drawing his cart and digging in the garden as we visit the piece. I believe this fiber is what is called in the U.S. Rami. I'm not absolutely sure, uh, but we will have the artist at the opening, and I am sure she will tell us what it is. It is well worth the awards.